Okay, so good morning, almost afternoon here. So we're gonna do this week's session, this is week six. So you've either taken your exam last week or you're gonna take it this week, all right? Um, what you really need to focus on that your programming skills are getting up to, to pace. We're actually ahead of what my schedule is. Uh, we're already jumping into loops, which is good. Um, but you really need to hammer on the practice, practice, practice. We've been doing a lot of programming in class, and one thing we've noticed is these little tiny errors, like you, you get an error message, and it says something's wrong on line seven, and you're pounding your head against the wall trying to figure out what's wrong with line seven, when really the line that has a problem is the previous line with a mismatch parentheses or a quote or something like that that's messing up your compiles. Rather than kill 10 minutes of your time, some of you I've seen have actually started to anticipate these errors and, and solve them within seconds as opposed to minutes. And especially when you're not of, uh, of the confidence to be able to ask for help and you waste even more time. So practice really helps you get faster and see common errors. And asking for help immediately is a great idea. And I really think you need to learn to ask for help more. In fact, a lot of you um, have, uh, let's see, uh, stackoverflow.com. I've shown this to a few of you already, but stackoverflow.com is the place to ask for help, and you can create a login here. Uh, first, you should search for anything that's related, like if you're trying to figure out how to do string comparison with Java, you should search here and see if you come up with a, a good solution. If not, or if there's some question that's esoteric that you can't find someone else asking, go ahead and ask here and people will answer your question and pretty well in real time. So take a look at Stack Overflow. The other thing I recommend for programming is, well, if I'm programming, I go to my music.google.com and I bring up something like Rush and then I start my Rush radio so I can uh, crank away to Rush while I'm programming. So I'm going to put that back in the background. Uh, actually, I should just turn it off or else this video is going to get banned for having too much commercial radio on it. So that's really the hints here. Make sure you're programming lots, practicing, get ahead on the topics. Which topics should you be doing? Follow the WSQ stream. That's the real thing. And while you're doing that, you should see, hey, I can do Mastery 12 and Mastery 14 and do those. Remember one blog post uh, and video if you're going to do videos or, or other formats for each topic, whether it's WSQ or Mastery. You can reuse content for different things, but you should keep these things to short entries for each item so we can get those marked and you can check them off your list of things to do. Other than that, good luck on the exam if you still have to do your exam. And, and I'm going to show you how to do some programming. So we're going to go through and see WSQ08, how to start that assignment. I'll do a version in C++ for the C++ group, and I'll do a version in Python for the Python group. So I'm going to pause this now, and then I'll recut those back in. Have an awesome week. So I'm back. So let's do some Python programming. Um, just a little quick review over a few other things here. If you go to the courses TC1014 part, you'll notice, let's go through the masteries. I showed some of you this yesterday, but just to remind you, I removed all these links because it was just kind of silly. The descriptions of the masteries tell you what you need to do. And if you want to see what other people are doing, that's what we got these tag cloud for. So just click on there and see what people are doing. For the WSQs, of course, and remember, the idea is if you're threading your way through the course, follow the WSQs. Those go in order of what you need to learn, uh, the way I think is the best order for it to do. And the masteries you can knock off at any time while you're doing work or maybe even you haven't done stuff yet and you know how to do one of the mastery items, just crank that out. Okay. One little detail, remember you need a separate blog post for each mastery and each WSQ. So you can't combine them. You could combine content if you had like uh, some code that covers two different of the, or three or four of these items. You can use that code. Just make sure you highlight during say your video or during your text presentation on your blog post what you're highlighting and why it meets that, um, that answer for that mastery or WSQ. So let's go ahead and take a look. WSQ8 is actually a rehash of WSQ3. So I'm going to open up WSQ8 here. 
we'll notice uh, the video's there for the C++ version. I'm doing the Python version right now, live. It'll be up there soon. That's why it's not there yet, or we'd be in the future. So WSQ03, if you remember, was, oh, there it is, the number 42. Ask for the user for a couple of numbers, uh, given the sum, the difference, the product, the integer division, and the remainder. So for example, if the numbers were 8 and 3, then the sum would be 11, the difference would be 5, the product would be 24, the integer-based integer division would be 8 divided by 3 is 2, and the remainder would actually be 2 as well, uh, because 8 divided by 3 is 2, which is the sum of 3 and 2, or the product of 3 and 2 is 6, so the difference uh, between the original and the product is 2, so remainder 2. Awesome. So it looks like I have a meeting here in a second, but we'll get this done in time. So that's what we need to do, but we need to do it with functions. Okay, so let's uh, pop out again here and let's jump into our text editor. All right, so we need to ask the user for a couple of numbers. So let's ask them for a couple of numbers. All right, so let's create an, uh, we want a first number, which is the integer value of the input of uh, give me the first number. Okay, all right. Oh, we should save this. So let's save it. For me, I've already shown you how to do things with GitHub, so I've created a directory where I'm going to put my things for this course, and you should do something similar. Let's save it as a Python file. Hey, there we go. Now it's nice with colors and stuff. So I'm going to just put a comment here and say um, my name, and I'm going to say this is for WSQ08, and main program starts below because I like to separate my main program from other stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. So before I actually start typing, uh, asking the user for stuff, I'm going to actually just print something right away and say, this program does some operations on two numbers. All right, and I'll say integers there. And maybe we'll specify integer here as well. All right. Uh, and I'm going to put a space there so it looks nicer. And we should be able to get the second one now. So let's change that first to be second. And uh, the second integer. And just to make sure everything's okay, I'm going to try to print those. The numbers you gave me are, and I'll separate with commas here. If you notice, we could use string concatenation. Um, and we could use commas. What happens with commas is it actually prints each one of the things separately, separate by the space. So I don't need to insert any spaces here. I'm going to save that and let's just go run it. So that was the C version. So let's go to devel tc1014. Shaking the camera with my typing. I should put a tripod in place. But oh well. Let's run Python 3 WSQ08. This program does some operations on two integers. Let's give the integers, let's go for 10 and uh, 7. The numbers you gave me are 10 and 7. Excellent. Good. So this is doing what I think it should. Let's go back to our editor. All right. So next what we're going to do, we're going to actually do the operation. Okay. So what do I want? I want an answer, or I want the sum. Uh, the sum. I'm going to do it this way because in Python the style is usually that we put underscores between words. So if we want the sum, if I was writing, say, Java or C++, the style would tend to be like this. But because we're in Python and we've read the Zen in Python, the sum would be written like this. So I want the sum to be, let's calculate, do the sum of that first and second. I'm making really long variable names, and I'll tell you here why, or function names and variable names. So what I've got is I want to get what the sum is, and I want to do that by calling a function called do the sum and that function is going to know about first and second which I already have in my hand. Okay, so that function doesn't actually exist yet. If I save this, I run it, what's going to happen? Well, Python's, because it's an interpreter, remember, it didn't compile it, it's not complaining yet. I'm going to say 10 and 7 again. And then it barfs, right? It says name do the sum is not defined. Well, no, it's not defined. It doesn't know what do the sum is. It's not a built-in function like print is or input is, it's something that we want to create. Now, as a rule, rule of thumb, the way I do things, is I like to create my functions at the top of the file and then the main program at the bottom. 
Later when you're doing multiple file programming, creating your modules, you'll want to separate them. But for now, I split my functions up at the top. So what was that function called again? It was called do the sum. Right? So we have a function definition like this. We say define a function called do the sum. And then we have to say what are the parameters, x and y. And just like a lot of other things in Python where we have the colon saying, OK, this is what it is for an if statement or a while statement, we're going to say this is what our function is. Notice that Adam knows about Python and indent it automatically for you. So we want the answer to be the x plus the y. And then we want to return that answer. Okay. So this is the job of the function. We're doing a function definition here. And actually in Python, it's obvious because we're using the keyword def. We're defining this function. This is the name of the function. These are the parameters that it expects an x and a y. And then the answer is going to be calculated. I'm going to return the answer. Okay. Of course, we could just return that calculation and not use an extra variable here. But this is the way we're going to do it. Okay, so that's the job of that function. This is the function definition, right? Oops, I folded that function for you. Cool feature of the editor. And then down here, we're actually using the function. So let's assume that all works. And then let's print something out. The sum of those numbers is comma the sum. All right, let's see if that works. Let's try. Let's run this. 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, and 7. The sum of those numbers is none. What's wrong? What's going on here? Hmm. Can you see the error? I can see the error because I screwed up. Ha, huh, I said return. Good thing I did this on purpose, but I didn't actually. But it's a good teaching lesson. So if I just say return from a function in Python, it returns a special value. Because it's saying return means two things. It means I'm finished. The function's over. Don't do any more lines below this inside the function. And it also gives us an option of returning something. If we don't return something, what are we going to return? Guess. Nothing. If you don't return something, you return nothing. And if I return nothing, what is nothing? None is a special value in Python. And so because we return nothing, that nothing got put in the sum and we printed none. What do I want to return? I want to return that answer, don't I? So let's try that again. 10, 7. And the sum of those 10 numbers is 17. Yes, we did it. Rock and roll. All right. Um, I want to show you one more thing while we're talking about the fact that you can return nothing on a function. If I don't even have a return and we reach the end of the function, the same thing actually happens in Python. If you don't specify return and you get to the end of the function, it's going to return that special none. So let's put that back. Okay, we're good. Now, let's pretend you wanted to do something else. Let's calculate the difference. Right? Let's calculate the diff difference is do the difference. And then I could the difference is the difference. All right? And then I could just copy paste this function definition. I'll make another one and I'll call it do the difference. And instead of plus, I'm going to go minus. It looks almost exactly the same. So exactly the same that in fact we could probably parameterize the operator and then create a function that takes values and an operator and applies the operator to the functions. But that's a little bit more advanced and we'll do that later. So let's crank that one out. 10, 7, oh, 76, oh well. The sum of 10 and 76 is 86 and the difference is minus 76. Woohoo, we're done. Have an awesome week and uh, that'll be it for today. Cheers. <laughs>